Test, test, one. All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Solid Rock. Let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for everyone that's here. Lord, we ask that you bless this service, Lord, and, and I ask that you give me the words to say to touch a heart, Lord, and to, and to open a mind, Lord. Lord, just guide us through this day, Lord, with your love and your spirit, Lord. And we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Today's lesson uh, is going to be from Matthew, and it's titled The Sheep and the Goats. Um, so don't misunderstand when I when I say something about sheep, because we know you know how we talk about uh, the sheep that are following our current leaders. Well, that, that's that's not us. We're following the one and only leader. So, Matthew twenty five verse thirty one through thirty four. Jesus said, "When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all angels with Him, He will sit on the on the glorious throne, on His glorious throne. I'm sorry." All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on the right side and the goats on the left. The king will say to those on his right, Come, you, are, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. Um, God is the shepherd of the world. Uh, and he protects his people like a shepherd would protect his sheep. Uh, that's, that's just what he does. He looks after us. He protects us. Uh, he, he keeps evil from us unless we open up and let evil in. Um, when Christ returns for his bride, everybody is going to be in front of him. As, as it says in the Bible that all need Every knee will bow. Well, that's the point when every knee is going to bow to him. Um, so he will gather, gather everyone together, and he will separate us. Those who have followed Christ and followed the word of God, those who have been faithful and have accepted Christ in their heart, will be on the right-hand side of God. Those who have, not turned, those who have turned their backs will be on the left-hand side. Um, so all of us who are faithful followers of Christ will be on the right-hand side of God. And, I mean, that, could mean that, 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 that word has two meanings, if you think about it. We're going to be on the right-hand side of God, but we're on the right side of God. See what I'm saying? Uh, we're not on God's wrong side. We're on God's right side. So not only will we be physically on his right side, but we are on, his, on the right side. Um, Matthew 25, 35 through 40. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothed you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king replied, Truly I tell you, whether you did one, did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So when we're, when we're feeding people downstairs in the food bank, it's like we're giving the food to Christ. We're looking out for those who are less fortunate than us. Um, when, when the uh, Redemption Center gives someone clothes or furniture, the church is looking out for those who are less fortunate to us. So it's just like giving it to Christ. That's what he's saying right here. Is when you do something for somebody else, uh, not for your own glory, uh, not to uh, put money in your pocket, 
but you do it for them out of the kindness of your heart, you're doing the same thing as if you were doing it for Christ. Plain and simple. Uh, if you're doing it for your own glory or, or to put money in your pocket, um, that's not for the glory of Christ. Now, that's not to say that if you're selling something to someone, that's, that's a different story. But if you see a person in need uh, and you do something for them out of the kindness of your heart, then that's what this is talking about. Um, what this is telling us here is uh, that we look out for the less fortunate. That's what God wants us to do. That's what Christ taught us to do. That's what this part of this verse is about. Teaching us how to take care of those who, who don't have the ability to take care of themselves. Uh, they could have circumstances that happen in their life that uh, they lost everything they've got. Food, clothing, housing. And as Christians, it's, it's our duty to look after those people. And uh, we're in a church that does that, has no problem with that, and has been blessed by God over and over and over again for the things that we do for the community. Um, this is a lesson that the world has forgotten. Uh, I mean, think of the statement. We know what the statement means. Uh, a government for the people, by the people. We know what that means. But we, that no longer exists. The, the government might be by the people because they're voted into office, but they're not for the people. They're, they're, they're not for, they don't care if, uh, if you don't have another meal. They don't care if you, if you don't have a roof over your head. They don't care if you've got clothes on your back, especially nowadays with all the, all the vulgar filth that's out there. You could probably walk around naked and the government wouldn't care. Um, they've turned their backs on the teachings of Christ. Uh, and they do nothing for anybody other than themselves. They're there for two things. As I said, they're there to put money in their pocket and to glorify their self. They don't glorify God by nothing that they've done over the past, I'm not going to say over the past 20 years because we had, we had a good four years there to where the man who was up there was for the people. He definitely was. And he's still for the people. But you can see what they're doing to him because of the fact that he wants a government by the people and for the people. So he's being drug across the coals over and over and over again. Um, and I believe in my heart that he's a good Christian man. Uh, you know, he might be a multi-billionaire, but he does take care of people. He's done a lot for people that, that, that's behind the scenes. He doesn't do it for his own glory. That, that's what leads me to believe that he's a good Christian man. Um, they've turned their backs on everyone that they swore to protect. Uh, but one day they'll stand in judgment for that. Um, And this, this, not only the world, but our country is falling deeper and deeper into sin. Um, but as I said, one day everyone will answer to God for that. Matthew 25, 41 through 45. <clears throat> then he said to those on the left, I think that's funny. Think about it. He said to those on the left, and who's the, who's the uh, enemy of this who, are the, who is the enemy of Christ? The left. The left wing. And the Bible says, he says to those on the left, Depart from me, you, you who are cursed into eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not visit me. In other words, 
you turn your back on me. They will also they, they also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly I tell you, whether you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. So, when this day comes, uh, every one of us, whether we've passed away or, or not, if we're still here or not, every, one, every, every person that's ever walked the face of the earth is going to be in that crowd. And those, who are, uh, those of us who are followers of God, followers of Christ, those who, who keep the faith and trust in him are going to see those who have done evil to us. We're going to see them get their just desserts. We'll be there to see it. Um, those are the people that, uh, uh, that have been collecting their rewards here in their life. Those are the ones that are, that are after the money all the time. Uh, they do what they can. They step on whoever they want to step on, step over who they want to step over, just to put money in their pocket and to feel powerful, plain and simple. So they're receiving their rewards now. Uh, we will receive our rewards in heaven. And the people who are taxing people into poverty, uh, promoting sin and filth in this world, which we see that all the time. Um, trying to corrupt children before their parents can teach them about the Bible. I mean, they're starting in kindergarten with this corruption. That was bright. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, Before we can get to, before our kids are, are at the age to where they can absorb what the Bible's teaching us, um, I mean, when they go to kindergarten, they're, they're still not at that age. I mean, they're, they're uh, they learn by doing, not by reading or by listening. They, you know, they, they, they learn by drawing and coloring and, and copying what the teachers are doing. That's what, that's what the evil in this world is dependent on, that they're going to copy what the teachers are doing. So if you've got a liberal teacher up there and she wants to push these sinful issues, these children are going to copy that and they're going to learn it. Their, their brain is like a dry sponge at that time, seeking water, and it's going to take it all in. Um, if they would go back to teaching, back to prayer and teaching about God in, in schools, this... Within 30 years, it'd be a totally different world, a totally different world. Um, they want to plant that seed of sin in that child's head when they're five years old. And they're going to keep watering it and watering it and watering it the further they go in school. And it's, it's a shame that, that, that that's like that. Uh, at one time, I mean, pretty much when, when, when I was young, you could depend on sending your kids to school. Uh, you knew that they would get a, they would be taught the true history. They, the, uh, I knew every morning when I went to school that we were going to say the Pledge of Allegiance and say a prayer every day. Um, I mean, you know, I, the first school I ever attended, uh, we didn't have the, uh, the the bell system that tells you it's time to go to class, it's time to go to lunch. Uh, we had a hand ba handshaking bell. Everybody remember that? And if you behaved yourself, you get to shake the bell one time that day. Yeah, you know, we're going to recess. I get to shake the bell today. I behave myself. Um, uh, that's why us as parents need to teach our children the right way. Um, I, my grandson right there, he, he loves coming to church. Uh, he loves, uh, he, he loves listening to Candy. He loves listening to my radio station in the truck. I listen to the contemporary Christian music. I love it. I play it all the time. Um, and every song that's on there has a lesson in it. 
plain and simple, I, and, and it's, it's great. And I think it's great for kids because, you know, if, if we was to bring five or six teenagers up in here and we were to go back to the, a lot of the gospel songs, um, the older gospel songs, they were sl very slow and you'd put those children to sleep. They're, they're not going to listen to that. You'd put them to sleep. But over the past 30 years, maybe even 40 years, Christian music has changed to where it's directed towards the teenagers. It's directed towards the youth of this world. Um, and you go and, and watch the, the, a video of a uh, contemporary Christian concert. Um, I was hearing on the radio this morning that newsboys are going to be touring all over the United States next year. I guarantee you that every venue that they play at will be packed. Every venue they play at will be packed. Um, it's like they take the words out of the Bible and put it to rock and roll music. So it's delivering a message and it's at the beat that the kids like to hear. But uh, if the evil in this world has anything to do with it, they're going to put a stop to it. Oh no, those kids can't listen to that. Those kids, let's get them to listen to this, this rap music talking about killing police officers and, and, and hurting people and, and stealing anything we want. Uh, that's why uh, Facebook, for instance, um, they, they send you a notice that your post does not meet our community standards, so we have removed your post. Uh, about three years ago, my, daughter, my granddaughter put a, a thing on Facebook that uh, she was crazy about Johnny Depp, and she said, I sure would like to date him. And I, and I answered her back. I said, yeah, and if he was to hurt you, I'd kick his butt. They flagged my post because I was threatening violence. Can you believe that? And now, and I showed my wife yesterday. I was shocked, absolutely shocked at what they allow on Facebook. And I tell, I just tell my daughter-in-law, if somebody hurts you, I'm going to kick their butt. I didn't have to use any curse words or any threatening thing like that. But I'm watching a video on Facebook yesterday, and this video was a Christian video. They were talking about this guy who, who was on an airplane somewhere, and a young black man was a Christian, and when people got up, he started preaching to them. He stood off to the side and let them exit the plane and was preaching the gospel to them. And the guy that was narrating, he says, there's nothing wrong with this. He's not interfering with anybody. He's doing what God told him to do, spread the gospel. And an ad popped up on that video. And that was the most vulgar ad I had ever seen in my life. It was an X-rated ad. I mean, it was ex explicit. What this man and this woman were doing together was explicit. And it was to sell some kind of male enhancement pill. Now, they'll allow that, but I can't say I'm going to kick somebody's butt. That's what, the, the, what we're talking about today is what they're going to answer for. Um, uh, Matthew 25, 46. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. You know, I was thinking about that when I was preparing this lesson about uh, our treasures in heaven that we're building up, our, our rewards. Um, I hope that I'm building up rewards. I hope I'm doing what God wants me to, to do. Um, and anything that he gives me, I'll be thankful for. Um, but the greatest reward is what we already have, is eternal life. That's the greatest of all of them. Um, and as, as David has said before, we've all heard somebody say that only God can judge me. Only God can judge me. But the way I see it, God is judging us every day. He's judging those who pu are pushing evil into this world every day. He judges them. Judges them. 
um, if he's not judging us, then how can we earn rewards while we're in this life? Um, he's judging them every day who are, who are teaching the evil and the corruption, stealing and backstabbing. For those, for those people, and uh, as it said earlier, for those on the left, um, it's not going to be judgment day. It's going to be their sentencing day. They're going to receive their life sentence at that point for all the evil that they've done in this world. Um, they're going to receive... It's, it, God has said that it's... it's uh, I know I'm not going to word this right, but I think you'll get the meaning that uh, it is not a responsibility. I can't think of the word, but God says that it, that it is, it is man is, is going to die once. I, and I don't know exactly how it's worded. I wish I did, but I... I it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, judgment. Exactly. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Okay. So, yes, we know we're all going to die. Um, it's just part. You know what? You start dying the day you're born. Your body, you know, you, you, your body is, is only going to last so long. Amen. Your soul will last forever. And when the body gets to a certain point, you're going to know it's getting to that point because all you folks under 30 years old, look out. And, and, and I had a doctor tell me one time I was at an eye exam and he, uh, he said it was every two years I went and got my eyes examined and the doctor told me he said uh, you turn 40 next year don't you I said yes I do he said well that's good I get to see you every year then I asked him I said why is that he said oh you'll find out and I swear the morning I woke up the day I turned 40 years old I had to get longer arms to be able to read <laughs> But it's all part of living. It's all part of living. Yeah, yeah. I've I've had medical problems. I've got, I've broken bones. I uh, had a gunshot wound. Had bad cuts. Uh, and I and I and I'll admit, it's been a lot of fun getting here. I've had a good life. I've had a lot of fun. I've made a lot of memories. So, you know. Um, But uh, that day, the, the, the judgment day, will be their sentencing day. That's the day that they're going to learn that they should have listened to us. They, they, shouldn't have, uh, they shouldn't have turned their, by, their backs on God or Christ, that, that it just wasn't worth it. Because you can't take it with you when you're gone. Has anybody seen that cartoon on Facebook where uh, this gentleman's walking up to the... Uh, the Grim Reaper, and he's got the boat to take you to the other side. And over here is a pile of stuff, and most of it's money. And he's got a suitcase, and you can see the money hanging out of it. And the Grim Reaper looks and says, put it right there, you can't take it. So all the wealth that they're building up in this world uh, by pushing their evil, when they close their eyes for the last time, that money is gone. Somebody else has got that. Um... When Jesus was finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, As you know, Passover is two days away, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. So what we just talked about was one of the, one of the last lessons that Christ taught us. And I think it's a very important lesson. Uh, what he's saying here is, is, is the teachings that I have given you while I was on earth are what you need to follow. That's what God wants you to do. God will take care of you. And if you don't, he gave us a warning. In the last, in the last couple of verses, he gave us a warning of what's going to happen if we don't follow Christ. Now, that's not a threat. Um, that's just... A warning. It's letting us know. Uh, Christ walked this earth for 33 years. Um, never sinned. 
was tempted and never sinned. Uh, went through his life teaching us right from wrong, good from evil. And then right here, just before he was crucified, he tells us, that it, you know, you need to listen to my lessons. I was sent here by God because this is God wants you with him. But you've got to follow the teachings to be with him. And if you don't follow the teachings, if you turn your back on him, there are no rewards for you. It's just eternal death in the, in the pits of, of, of hell. Um, so, and I, I think in this lesson, he paints a very clear picture of what the gospel is saying. Accept Christ, uh, follow his teachings, follow the commandments of God, and it, it just tells us the love that God has for mankind. That's what it's telling us about. Because if, if we listen to him and believe in him and follow him, trust in him and have faith, we're going to get to spend an eternity with him. And we can only, as the song says, you can only imagine what heaven's like. Uh, I don't think we can, I don't think there's even in our wildest dreams we can actually imagine exactly what it's going to be like. So thank you, everybody. <laughs>